Yeah. All Welcome right. Kelly Fawner. <laughs> well, hi. Hi, Jenny. And hi to the leagues of people that watch us afterwards, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I think, well, I always in, enjoy wrap up sessions at the end. And so we've been doing this now. I think we've done the wrap up session for every year that we've had um, Echo Voices, at least as long as I've been involved. Five and, years, I think. Oh, okay. Wow, what I've been told. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, what's nice about it is we get, we're just going to do kind of an overview of everything so that people can go back and um, to the S'mores link and watch the videos, go to the YouTube channel, advertise that YouTube channel there, Chandra, um, and and watch those, those videos or the portions of the videos. In fact, when I was putting the content together, I thought, oh, I forgot that there was that resource. So many of the presenters have multiple resources that they share and they're all immediately usable. Um, I really like the functional um, parts of things that we had this year. So I'm gonna grab my screen somewhere here, share out. So yeah, we celebrate a year of, another year of Echo Voices here. Um, and this year, the the team at OTAP put together, um, having looked at what sessions were in the past, where there were years that we focused on tools, and there were years that we focused on um, strategies like assessment and implementation. This year, having taken away questions from previous years and input, we are going to be asking for input today. So even if you're not attending live, we want you to be out, want you to send in input to uh, to Chandra and Deb and the team so that they can start to build next year's Echo Voices. Um, and so out of that input from last year was this focus on partners and how do we support communication partners, whether they are family, whether they are paid partners, what we do with unfamiliar communication partners. And I think that the, the team put together a lot of great sessions about that. So I've got kind of a really quick review. And then I'm going to do, we're going to ask you what your takeaways are. And we'll look at the takeaways from each session. Um, and so I try, it's really hard. I tried to pull two to three major points out of each presentation that we've had. Um, I might have snuck in a fourth one there for somebody, but you know that's the way it goes. Um, and then we're going to look at our ideas for next year, and and then Chandra will will wrap us up here in this this year of focus on communication partners. So in the fall. Um, as Chandra said, I'm the bookend. So I started us out talking about the many roles of communication partners. And I'm going to go into more detail in each of these. And then we had um, Jill and Matt um, from the Talc Center in Illinois. And they really talk about the s'mores process. They do great um, professional development for paraprofessionals and for families. Um, Tana's session, I was able to attend live. You know, really talking about how do you have AAC as a part of a busy life and how do we make sure that we're including language learning, um, you know, throughout the day, every day. Um, and then Carolyn and Sarah, who are a part of the Michigan Project, um, the Alt Shift Project, but they also um, do a lot of presentations from, from their own um, independent con consultation, really looked at taking AAC to the bigger community. So that was a, a great presentation to attend as well. We hit the winter months um, and Carolyn Parker, I got to watch this one um, afterwards. I wasn't able to attend this one live. Really looked at that classroom environment and supporting you know, the communication partners of our young AAC or early AAC users um, with it. And then Heidi Robbie came in with the, the, you know, the topic of the year, which is looking at coaching um, and really focused on three different styles of, of coaching and three different types of coaching practices. 
Um, and then where am I going? Uh, oh, Sarah, Sarah had, I mean, it's another topic of, of the year has been things about protecting, making sure that the students and the individuals with disabilities that we all work with and support are giving consent for the types of strategies that we use with them. Um, and such an important topic as we, uh, Sarah gives great, well, sad statistics about the um, level of abuse that happens, especially to our females um, within um, who have disabilities within a variety of settings and how we need to make sure that we're, we are not building uninformed consent and I'm, now I'm saying too much on this one slide. Um, we'll, we'll get to Sarah's slide and I'll talk about the, the major <laughs> takeaways from that. But it's just such an important topic. And I think that that was then echoed by Krista. Uh, Krista, who is an AAC communicator herself, but does training and consultation. She really talked about the different stages of her use um, and her takeaways from that, what we should and should not be doing. And and I think also did a nice job with with uh, looking at people's focus um, with it. And then Barbara and Pam from Assistive Wear, um, both, you know, and Pam has personal experience as a parent of AAC users and Barbara is a teacher, um, even though they both work for companies now, the company now of Assistive Wear, which makes um, ProLoco to go and SimPod and some other great, you know, apps and supports. And they really went through how do, can we do coaching um, for a family? And I like that they also gave it the perspective of if you are a family member, what should you be asking for um, for the people that serve you and your child? And then running into the spring, although many of us had extended winter, uh, Kelly Key, who has like more energy than everybody tied together, um, talked about what they're doing with family involvement as a part of the Barrington School District, where she's the, the AT coordinator. And every slide is a gem. Like, it was really hard pulling just one or two. And, and there's so many supports out of there. Uh, so that's a great one to go back and review. Or also one, if you haven't watched it, start there. Um, <laughs> might be a really good place. Um, I was able to attend well, both that one live as well as um, the one at the beginning of April. And I thought I changed this slide because we all ended up only having two of these four presenters do um, the presentation, even though the content was from all four of them. And well, I'll get to their slide. There's so many great reminders about how to build advocacy, self-advocacy, as well as focusing on those communication competencies and how do we do that as communication partners. Um, and then there was a little bit of a switch up in April. We were supposed to have another presenter, um, but you know, things don't always work out. And that presenter will be a part of next year is what I'm hearing. Um, and so Blair from Toby Dynavox came in and talked about what are the supports that are out there? And I think surprised people with how many different types of resources that aren't just product specific um, that come out of our AAC community. Uh, and so a great one to make sure that you've got tags to all of the resources, because knowing that even if you're not a Toby Dynavox user or you don't have a consumer on your caseload, you'll be able to use the strategies that Blair talked about and the supports. And then we just wrapped up, it seems like just a week ago, with Paige talking about executive functioning. And this is one that I wasn't able to attend live because I was still in Oregon after the conference. I was having a great time on the Oregon coast after the live conference um, in Salem. Uh, and so I was able to watch Paige's uh, presentation last week and uh, really look at a different take on executive functioning and how that relates to um, AAC and supporting AAC communicators. So I always think that that's, um, you know, a, a great, that was a really great wrap up for us. And what I want to do is we have a mentee set up. And before I just start 
rolling through what all my takeaways are. Um, Jenny, I've already added two things in here. So it's not only just you and Chandra. <laughs> but if you can go, if you have if you can go to the Menti, we've got the website with the code, or you can go by the URL. And this is for you know the people who are not attending this live. This Menti is going to still be up because this is something that we will go back to as we start to build the 2324 Echo Voices season. Um, and there are two questions there. I'm going to kick out of this PowerPoint and go to the Menti. Well, at least I think I will. There we go. Um, and see, I'll make sure that it's still up and running. I think it looks like it's there we working. Go. Yay, here we go. Yay. I threw an answer in there. It was such a fantastic year for me to start. Yeah. Well, oh, I love this, that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Oh, that was a good one. Yes. I've heard that before. It is always a good reminder. Yeah, for sure. Great resources for parents to learn modeling and why it's important. And like I said, we're going to keep this going. We won't shut this down at the end of this session so that we can um, go back to it. I'll make sure. Let me share it. I wasn't, I didn't realize I wasn't sharing my screen. There we go. There we go. All right. So good stuff. I'm going to flip back to my PowerPoint. I think we can get back that easily. Maybe not. And I'm just going to start kind of going through the the sessions. And Chandra, Ginny, anything you want to chime in, please, please unmute and, and go for it. Um, when we opened up the bookends of this year, I introduced the idea of communication partners and the recognition that our AAC communicators communicate with people differently. Um, and one of the tools that's out there is social networks. So I talked a little bit about that, about how we need to recognize and honor the communication modality that people choose to use with the individuals that they're talking with. Um, and that as we moved into this year of working with communication partners and we have kind of this idea that we might change the beliefs or change the practices of people is really, I, I love this model that talks about, you know, where people's beliefs and values are really built on the environment, habits, and what we really need to do is change their experience. We just can't talk to people about it. We can't just show them a video, um, but really help and, and walk people through that process. So we talk about modeling for our AAC communicators. It isn't just for our communicators. It's for all the people that surround those communicators. Um, and that was really brought to light with Matt and, um, and Jill. And as I mentioned, they do this really great training called S'mores, and they have other things that support that as well. Um, this is just a couple of screenshots from their slide decks. Um, but I, I like the other part is that we're always being asked to 
use strategies that have evidence base. So the first couple of slides in their presentation give you research citations. So if you're somebody that needs to look for that kind of content, this is a great slideshow to go back to. Um, and, and I pulled out one of them that talks about training the communication partners and why we need to do that. So for those of us like me that I, I am a direct provider to just a couple of kids, but mostly I'm a consultant and often people need to justify to administrators why consultants are working with staff and not working directly with children. You know, so I think a lot of their quotations and their process <clears throat> um, fills that need that many of us have. And I'm sorry that the slides that I grabbed were pretty fuzzy. I think it was just because of their like, you know, third hand copy. Um, this, they're much clearer um, within the slide deck if you go to the site and, and download it right off of the Echo Voices um, some more. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, Tana came on and really talked directly about modeling and modeling, teaching parents to model and this nice model of modeling, um, where preparing, creating opportunities. She went into each of these five areas of, um, you know, prepare, create, support, <clears throat> model, you know, that there's stuff that goes into modeling. I think sometimes when we talk about modeling, we think that everybody's just going to understand it right from the get-go and not really realizing that it in itself is a strategy that needs to be supported, right? We just don't just go, oh, do that, <laughs> All right? So, so she gave a really nice background in it. And then how to follow up upon that, you know, that modeling isn't just the be all end all in the end, but it really is the beginning of other kinds of strategies like descriptive teaching and other things that we use. Um, she has some really nice visuals um, that she uses with her parents and staff. Um, and the lower right-hand corner, I just stole one of those slides that talked about the word maps. She has a couple word maps that you can download that are part of the handouts and then other information at, uh, at websites that you can link to where she helps you come up with words. In fact, I needed this yesterday because we were talking, I had a student that we were talking about how um, chimpanzees are endangered. I learned all my chimpanzee facts yesterday um, during a Retopia unit on Jane Goodall. And she did not have the word endangered in her AAC system. And boy, oh boy, were we really working hard to find words to describe endangered. So it was like little, few, she came up with bad, you know, that it was something that was bad. And so I thought, oh, I really need to run that word through Tana's AAC word map um, so that I'm ready for our next discussion um, on the word endangered. And then I think this is also a good strategy of making decisions about what words do we add? You know, we get in, involved with people who aren't, full-time AAC, you know, professionals, and they want to put every content word from every class into an AAC system. And a student might only use that word for that week and then it's gone. So I think looking at that is what word's coming up and the, the value of that word. And so now the discussion with my student that we're having is, is this word endangered a word that will be used in many different references. And so, yeah, that's that's the discussion that the her speech therapist and and uh, Parapro are having today. And we'll see what comes from it. And I think that that kind of touches on um, a, a strand that was throughout e everything was the core words. You yes. know what they are, how to use them, when to use them. So, um, yeah, that's an, that was important strand through the entire year. And, you know, for for people that are are watching, Ginny, I know this isn't your situation, but for people that that, you know, this idea of core and fringe is very new. There were some great sessions last year that actually I think four or five sessions last year 
really focused on core um, and what that was and how to introduce it. And we do, and we have reminders here this year from um, the, how do I support communication partners to understand this concept of core. Um, the next session oh, with, um, with uh, Sarah and, um, and Carolyn looked at that modeling throughout the day and they have this building blocks model that they shared. Um, they have a, a big training series that they do off of the Michigan Alt Shift project called Building Blocks. And so modeling is a part of it and building that autonomous communication so that the message is coming from the communicator, not just because somebody said, see this. <laughs> we always look at that issue of if you're always just telling somebody what to say with their AAC system, all they're doing is following directions, right? They just do what you tell them to do. They don't understand the context. And so Carolyn and Sarah really want people to understand that connection and what goes behind that um, and building into it for people to have value and trust and, and build their need and use of their AAC system. And that, as I mentioned before, it isn't something that can just happen all at once. They have a really nice process. I like this idea of easing into the, the modeling day. So this is definitely one of the, the things that I've taken into, into my practice since gosh, their presentation seemed just like yesterday and it was November. Um, and did I skip something now? And um, Carolyn, this is one of the ones I had to catch up with. Um, and I hadn't watched it till, till recently. Really great practical examples um, yes. in her presentation, right? Chandra, yes. do you have something about hers? I, I saw her, um, and again, I was still really new to all of this, and she was she was down to earth and engaging and and like you said, very practical. Um, it, for me, as someone who is new to all of it, was fantastic. Yeah. The screenshot on the left of the keys to great group instruction, this is just one example from many slides, right? That where she tells you that specifically, this is what you should be looking for. This is what you need to be aimed to doing. And, and she gives you that kind of, those kind of uh, numerical goals, like aim for five to seven engagement opportunities per minute, right? And then she's going to tell you how to do it. She doesn't just throw a stat out there and not support it. Um, and she had great practical examples from her own practice, lots of links that you could go to um, and find. And then pictures like in the lower right-hand corner, um, different kinds of things that she used. I, lo I love all these wands, by the way. Okay. I, I have a, where's my... A, you know, I think she's the one. I am that, feeling um, not adequate, right? Yes. This is all I have at my desk side. Yes. is this, the little star and the, and the Mickey Mouse finger, right? This is an impressive set of wands. <laughs> yeah, she had a whole cart, and she talked about um, the little things that she had in her cart to, that she would just push around to to the classrooms. After I saw this, I did a training in New Jersey, and all the little things on, let me see if I can like, get my tools, like all these little things you can put on your finger, like the witch's finger and, oh, well, the flashlights have always been a great tool, but the little googly eyes went out and bought those to, to give at a workshop. Uh, but we just had all kinds of fun um, with that stuff. So, yeah. See, you never know. Tips and tricks come in many different ways. So if you're a tips and tricks kind of person, you need to go back and, and uh, revisit Carolyn's um, presentation. Heidi, I mean, Heidi's been, you know, I think was in talking about coaching before coaching became the thing, right? For people to, to talk about. And she, you know, really, she gives you the background on it. I love all like the graphics of on the left of, you know, how after, you know, she talks about these three different types of, of coaching strategies and 
boy, oh boy, after listening, I, I had seen her present in another context. And so this was a really great uh, review of that for me. Um, because I do, I have a family that I work with that's very parent led. And I think that that, you know, that following what their goals are, rather than just running with my goals, has been a big shift for me uh, in these last two years of that, that piece of my work, especially my remote work with families who have, um, whose children are homebound for services for for many different reasons. It wasn't just during the hot time of COVID, uh, but for other medical and school-based reasons. And I just think that re that going back and listening to Heidi, and I love this list on the left of, you know, the listen, the connect, the trust, uh, be a witness to good. I had a parent, say, and it's really hit me. I had a parent, we have a meeting with our remote team every month. And I think it was back in November or December. And I was kind of in an after meeting with the parent. And she said, this is the first time that everybody that shared didn't lead with a problem. Right? Like that all the other meetings that we've had since August, people led with what wasn't, what wasn't working, what problems they were having. And we hit that kind of November, December turn. And people were talking about, oh, I was so surprised about this and look at this that happened. And I found out what you were doing in science when she started doing her writing. And there was just a shift that happened that way. And so I, I it, Heidi's session hit at a really good time for me um, with, that, with that parent. So I could make sure that I was kind of following along with these pieces of finding common ground and you know, trying not to destroy this word destroy really can, you know, that some of the practices Strong. that are common that we do can be very destructive to relationships and to that whole positivity of moving forward. So if you're in that kind of coaching role, this is awesome session to, to go back and take away from. Um, I mentioned way probably way too much about Sarah's session when we were back in the quick overview, but I think that this is another hot topic uh, where, you know, when we talk about how we overhandle our students and we do it from the component of, you know, I'm supporting them, I'm teaching them, I'm modeling, and then I'm going to fade, but with the stat the growing number of statistics that we have about abuse, this idea of building consent. Um, and I know sometimes people look at me and roll their eyes. I actually had that happen um, last month when I was talking to a middle school teacher about how, even though they were trying to get a student through a lunch line, you can't just, you know, grab that student and, and pull them through the line, right? It just, that part of it, that that manhandling of, of people. And so we have to really look at this issue and how do we change what might be common in many of our practices from the aspect, I always think that people aren't doing it maliciously, that people aren't doing it intentionally. You know, they're doing it all with, I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to support, I'm trying to build success for my child, success for my student. But then what, we see on the other end, and I think I shared during this session, um, I have a, my um, husband's oldest sister had cerebral palsy. She lived to be 72. And um, Kay's way of protecting was to run people over with her wheelchair. Like that was what she would just slam into people. So if you wouldn't listen to her, she had a very vocal no, um, uh, you know, out loud and would yell that. But there were other people that lived in her um, assisted living who had less inhibitions about coming at people. And and I mean, for those of us that work with adults, we know that some people, you know, have behaviors that are more attacking others. And that was the one way that my sister-in-law could protect herself was to just literally, if there wasn't a staff member around, and there was a another client that was in her face or coming at her for whatever 
reason, um, she'd just run into them. <laughs> So I don't recommend that for everybody, but, you know, I do know firsthand what we do and, and what we need to do to protect our loved ones in all ways. I know that one caught me off guard, that whole consent topic. Um, as a parent, I, I never really thought a whole lot about it. My kids are pretty vocal, but um, the thing that stuck with me is the hand over hand writing practice. And, and the, the need to move away from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, Cause, cause just like you said, you, it's like, that's normal. It's a normal practice and, and people are doing it because they're trying to teach and yeah, it really caught me off guard. Yeah. Uh, and it's an uncomfortable topic, right? And I think uh, absolutely. Sarah, Sarah as a presenter handled it so well. I mean, she, you know, she makes the uncomfortable comfortable or she makes you uncomfortable enough that you really listen um, and say, oh, I need to really be thinking about this. So much so that I even when I'm working with my four year old granddaughter who struggles with writing uh, my, you know, I'm not doing any kind of hand over hand. I'm side by side with her and I really catch myself in the kinds of things that I'm doing, you know, when she's with us or. Or even like last night we were at T-ball and I'm thinking, oh, and the coach is like hand over handing her with the, with the baseball bat. Really, should she be doing that? She has this like six foot tall man over this little four year old. I, I think we <laughs> all did that. <laughs> we all did that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, and there's no, you know, you know, there's no intention there, but it's what comes afterwards, right? Oh my. And then, oh, as I was mentioning earlier, Krista was such a good follow-up after the previous session because she really talks about it from firsthand. And, and she has so much experience as a presenter and as a consultant and as, you know, a support for kids in, in classrooms and for young adults. Um, for people that have heard of the Out and About, you know, Out and About, which is a, a practice in family services, to get families and their children who use AAC and their brothers and sisters um, out in the community together, supporting each other. And they meet, you know, I think it's like once a month. It depends upon it. It's a, a, a whole implementation strategy for AAC family base that got started 25 years ago when Krista was in school. Right. So when she was, you know, in middle school, and she now runs the group, right? So she and other other AAC communicators have taken this practice of out and about. And I just saw on Facebook this morning or on LinkedIn that they're going to be talking about out and about internationally. You know, they're going to be starting this up in other countries. I know I'm in Wisconsin and uh, we have our AAC communicator group, our Wisconsin AAC network. And part of that is the chat club that's run by an AAC communicator, Mike Hippel. Um, and Mike has taken the practices and his and the colleague that he's working with is Jennifer Schubring, um, who's one of our presenters from last year's um, Echo Voices. And they talk about that in the... Um, Northeastern Wisconsin area and the, the Green Bay Appleton area and they meet with families and and so they take a lot of Krista and her colleagues um, ideas away from that. I love that she shared that she didn't use her device right away. This was the presentation that I couldn't just take two to three ideas from. I needed more than that. Um, I love that she represents herself, you know, like her emoji with all of her communication modalities. So that people can really, this is a sophisticated AAC user who also during her presentation talks about how she still struggles with spelling because in school, nobody expected her to spell. So they never taught her to. And so now she's got a big push to be using spelling and word prediction more um, within her own AAC system. So she had some really great perspectives um, to take away. This is a session that I've had um, that I've shared with my families, with my consumers. Um, in some cases, we've watched it together 
so that we could talk about the things that Krista brought up. Um, and so she's just really valued in the, the AAC community um, for that. And I think these little takeaways, like in the lower right-hand corner, don't take their device away. It's like taking their voice away. You know, I, you know, people say that in many different ways, but when you hear it from her, it takes a different twist. It isn't just like, yeah. oh yeah. This it's one fun. really stuck with me. It really did. Um, the fact that she had so many different devices um, for different things. The fact that she used it with her son was really neat. And uh, the not taking their devices away um, in the OTAP library, I kind of take that really seriously because we have these devices that we loan out for 45 days, but very often it, it takes longer than that to get uh, a device through trialing and through the insurance process so that they can get their permanent device. And so it really, um, I will let them keep it for as long as possible because I don't want to take their voice away. Yeah. And I think Kelly was saying that she was having some internet issues. So that's okay. Um, did you, Jenny, did you get to see uh, that particular one? I did see that one. Yeah. You saw Krista's perfume. Mm -hmm. What did you, what did you take away from that one in particular? Um, we've had multiple discussions about that in our district, um, about kids who might be playing on the device and then, <laughs> you know, it's like put away because it's time right. to listen to the teacher or whatever it's like mm, yeah it's, it's yeah, not how you yeah, do it no you can't you can't do that and and there has I think there was some discussion about that uh the dedicated devices versus mm -hmm. your iPad and how they can just play on their iPad and um and that's caused some concerns in classes welcome well, back Kelly yeah I know Sadly, I knew it was going to happen. It's happened every day this week um, that I've gotten kicked off. So sorry about that. It's good. We were talking about Krista. Yeah, there was a lot there um, to talk about. So, Oh, really? I mean, such a, a good presentation. I, I, I attended that one live and then I also rewatched it last week. So it was just like great takeaways. And I'm really glad that she... You know, she's, she has found her time, right? She is, she's working hard. She's getting, you know, her degree um, in, um, to be an SLP aide. Um, so yes. it's really, really good, good stuff. All right. Let me see if I can find my way back. It was fantastic to see her do a whole presentation on her device. Oh yeah. You know, and then, and have to be patient right? We all had to practice our patience. Um, and that, that was a good, uh, communication partner practice for us. Yeah. There you go. You're learning your pausing strategy. Yeah. yeah. So following up on Krista was, uh, uh, the girls from assistive wear. And so Barbara is fantastic. It, it's nice to have somebody from another country present and talk about, you know, these same kinds of strategies that we're promoting here um, um, in our practices. Um, and then, of course, Pam has firsthand experience as a family member um, of AAC communicators. So they really were able to, to pull that coaching perspective. But also, I like because they also talked about it. What should you be asking for? Like, here are the things that, you know, like for in Heidi's presentation, here are different ways to coach. Now from this, this is a nice kind of pairing with Heidi Robbie's session with this session, because then it's putting it into action. And what should I be asking for? What should I be um, making sure I'm looking for? Um, and so I tried to pick those pieces. There were so many good moments and really nice examples 
um, in their presentation. I've actually seen this presentation like three times, um, once at a live conference and then twice now in, in different um, webinar venues. But and I think every time I have something else like, okay, yes, I got to remember to say that um, when, you know, when I share information about, um, and I, this, this pain point piece was, you know, it's, it's just a small component. They go through um, different areas, but then they talk about what can you do about each of these issues, right? So when people are feeling overwhelmed, when they lack background knowledge, when you feel like you're alone in the journey, when you feel like modeling is hard. And our, I have a colleague, Sharon Redmond in Washington, who talks about that a lot of people just feel weird modeling, right? They don't do it because they feel like they're talking to themselves, right? Like they have all of these reasons why modeling is a strange thing to do. Uh, and Sharon acknowledges that. And then we move forward. Um, and so the other thing that, you know, that these guys talked about was how to get people on board and on board for the process. So, like I said, that's a nice pairing of the, of Heidi's session, um, with, with Barbara and Pam's. And then Miss Dynamo, Kelly Key, who doesn't, you know, have, have a breath of a moment. I mean, she is just a barrel full of energy and one of the things that I really pulled out of her session because I was attending her session while well unfortunately while I was doing something else and Kelly knows this like I told her like I'm here and and I'm sorry you're doing all these great breakout groups and I'm refusing to go in the groups but I'm sorry but she knows she knows I said I've got this report that's due but I didn't want to miss her but oh my goodness, she was such a great model for ways that you can, if you're doing virtual training, how to do that. She talked about activities like this musical pairs activity that she did um, with families when they have families in person. So, and there were, there were so many of those in her hour. I can't believe how much she did in an hour. But then she also took you through what is their approach in Barrington? 220 is the name of the, the number for the school district. Illinois school districts all have a, a number with them. Um, and so you'll often see from Illinois presenters kind of the name of the district along with their, their district number. Um, and she goes kind of group by group. What do we do in early childhood with core? What do we do school age? You know, how do we start to infuse this? What did they use at different levels? So again, just like with Carolyn, very practical, uh, but a ton, ton of information. She gave some really great firsthand examples of how she connects with parents, sending videos, uh, taking pictures, all of those kinds of things were really, you know, they weren't, it wasn't all like it was great. It was, wasn't all new ideas. But it was like, oh, I know of this, but I don't do it, right? So here's your reminder, your great reminder to do these kinds of things and how it really can build and foster communication partners um, for a child. Um, and like I said, and she talks about their playground boards because playground boards is another big hot topic, right? I think, I think Chandra, we need to put playground boards. I don't know how you feel about playground boards, Jenny. Um, but, you know, I, I think that should be a topic next year. Ginny's giving it a thumbs up, right? Oh, and Joy, if you want to chime in, I think we should have playground boards as a topic because there's all different ways that people are doing them and getting them funded and supported. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have a colleague that I have had that discussion with. Um, we have a playground uh, in our county that is an inclusive playground. And there is no communication board on the playground. And I'm like, that is the perfect place for that. So she and I are going to get together and the, the funding is, is not an issue. Cause it, I mean, it really doesn't cost very much. Um, but it's, it's about the, uh, what goes on it, right. Yeah. That's the, that's the sticking point. So yes, discussion would be amazing about that. And the longevity of it, that, you yeah. know, that piece of it. Joy, do, Kelly, you have, do you have yeah, a, Kelly, a playground we, boards? <laughs> um, 
one of our primary grades facilities has a playground board. Great big giant went out on the playground. So we are we are believers in it for sure. All right. Well, so that I'm putting that on my list of topics for next year for sure. I want to see how people are doing them. This was the second, this is when I was saying earlier that it was originally booked as four presenters. It was two, but it was the information from, from the four. Boy, what a nice use of case studies in this presentation. Um, and so they really, you know, they they looked at these critical elements. This is what we need to build. So as communication partners, we need to make sure that we are fostering robust vocabulary while still giving students, you know, choices and opinions, but it's not just about choice boards. Um, really connecting them to role models in their community, um, how we do communication partners and training and when, you know, and, and, and how that takes place. And then also building this whole piece of social emotional vocabulary. And one of the nice things that they did was they they presented their information in the context of case studies. So we're kind of used to here in the, the echo voices where we'll get, you know, the presentation and then there's a case study connected to it at the end. They infused their case studies throughout the presentation, which was really um, a great way to do it. And then, you know, for, for me, you know, having been built on Janice Light's and Kathy Binger's um, competencies, they really brought in that fifth competency of the social emotional piece that, you know, has been added over the years, but not a lot of people talk about that. And so I thought that that, that was, a, it was, it was a good presentation in so many ways. And then, oh, as I mentioned, we had Tabby filled in for, um, for another presenter whoops, that was not available. And we were able to be taken through, like what are the supports that are out there? What are those practical supports that um, that come from Toby Dynavox? But what I tried to do is pull some of her slides that really were every tool, right? That it isn't just specific to products that come from Toby Dynavox. But what should be the things that we do, you know, slide in the name of your device here. And she also gave some really nice uh, case examples of supporting and building um, up a, a, a AAC communicator um, at the different levels of getting started, what, you know, and then after they got their device and they're putting it to use. So I think some, you know, not everybody's aware that what kinds of supports companies have in general. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about Toby Dynavox or Assistive Wear, or we're talking about Smartbox or Pranky Romic, um, Satillo, that, that companies have these support sites that they've been building up over the years from information from practitioners. And I, I run into way too many people at state levels or at, at administrative school district levels that block their practitioners from going and getting information directly from vendors because they have this idea that the vendors are always just in for it, the sale, 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 right? And, and I mean, I have been in school systems that say, oh, we're not allowed to go use anything off a of vendor site. And you're like, what? Like, it isn't just about the cost and the money, but, you know, some administrators don't have this kind of information, you know, don't know that the vendors recognize that if they can support the implementation of their systems, that that helps them in, you know, resale, right? So the implementation part of their job, they see just as importantly as getting through the assessment and the sale. And I think that she was a really good example, you know, of the, the kind of supports that, that you all have in your area. And for people that are watching this wrap up, it isn't just about what supports Oregon is getting. You know, these are the supports that you need to look for in, in your state and, your, and in your area um, for it. So I, I like that, you know, we can show this side of vendor and, and, their, and what they do um, to help people. And then lastly, our wrap up just a couple of weeks ago, 
um, with the session on executive functioning. And what I what I really my big takeaways from Paige, and I just love Paige. Um, and I think that this the um, you know when she looks at this B strat, I had never heard of the B strategy before her presentation. So looking at the behavior, the executive functioning, the environment, and the strategy is a really nice practical way of putting together kind of a functional behavioral plan. Um, and so there's probably other people that have been out here heard about bees before. Like I said, it was a new acronym for me. Um, and I love that she tied in the communication matrix, you know, especially in Oregon with the communication matrix coming out of Oregon health and science, you know, we hear about it a lot in, I think over the last two, maybe three years of echo voices, We've been, there are presentations that are just on the matrix, right? But then what Paige did is pulled the matrix apart. I love this graphic. Um, I'm writing permission to her to see if I can use it in my presentations um, with credit, of course, to, to Paige of how she pulled the content together. Um, but she goes through each of the levels and talks about them behaviorally, talks about them with what supports. Um, and it was really, you know, for those of you and, and those of us that use the communication matrix quite often and we need to support it. And then sometimes you get the people that have, that you're talking to that have heard you talk about the communication matrix uh, about a billion times and they do the eye roll. Here, Paige has got a great news twist on it for us. So that's what I said, I definitely have to write to her and say, hey girl. <laughs> I need to use this perspective um, on the matrix itself. So it was, again, another uh, great reminder. And I have found with the matrix, with communication partners who are new, um, that this, this puts some things in perspective for them. You know, that, and I know that there are some people, especially in AAC, that are very cautious about the communication matrix because they have run into situations where people feel like this is a lockstep, that they have to go through these seven levels in this, or you know, and I think that that is definitely not the intention of anybody that, you know, of, of charity and the whole team um, at Oregon Health and Sciences, not that you get, you, you know, do a test and see where a student is and then you leave them there. Um, but that it, it gives people a place to look at what can we, what are we seeing behaviorally that really is communicative? Um, and it really helps people acknowledge that communication is in all forms. It isn't just what comes out of somebody's mouth or from a touch of a device, right? So um, yeah, really kudos to Paige and how she pulled that content together. So you guys, <laughs> That is the 22, 23 year um, in Echo Voices. And so we wanna, you know, as we as we look to next year, what are some of the things that, you know, I've already, I'm putting playground boards on as soon as we go to this mentee, I'm quitting out of this slide. And then I'm gonna go to, let's share over to the mentee. Oh, well, hey, there's my students. <laughs> this is what happened when I went off. So this was our first mentee. Hopefully you're seeing it. And then let me go to our second. And oh, let me go. Got a second question in there. So if you go to, you can go to this code, right? Go to menti.com, put this code number in, and then you can click to the second question, which is what are you looking for next year? And I'm gonna stop sharing and get that going while you guys take a chance here to take an opportunity to Well, Jenny and Joy, what 
what were your favorite moments this year? I'm curious to hear. Was there anything that stuck with you in particular? I'm still just reveling from all the greatness that came from the conference. Oh, yay. I mean, <laughs> I just came away from there in every session that I chose. I just came away from there in just awe of the, the mindset changes that I became aware of. The, um, I mean, just like my approach to a couple of things. Uh, there was a couple of profound moments about um, my approach to take, uh, how do you, I don't know how to put it in words because it's just such a feeling of, um, so my approach in one instance with a student and their AAC device correlating with staff and their lack of confidence in modeling uh, just kind of came to this profound moment of, I was not really giving them a chance to voice whether they wanted it modeled for them or, I mean, just kind of how I thought I was presenting it in a way that was their voice, their option, really kind of with the mind shift of my mindset on the outlook was it really wasn't representing what they wanted. So I had to like take that back in a pause, but that's just, I mean, just the conference was just, wow if those could be recorded and like saved for something just wow anyone who missed it you missed it <laughs> so <laughs> deb will be thrilled to hear that <laughs> yeah that's awesome i'm so glad that you uh you got a lot out of it and then through the year, through the whole, um, this, this season of all of our, um, webinars, you guys have put on everything I've come away with, oh, this will work for this student, or I can envision this for this student, or I need to let this PT or OT know about this. This is going to be a great strategy. This will help solve maybe this conflict with that, with that, um, staffing mm -hmm. or, I mean, every, every session I've like have this whole category on my on my saved pages, each session is kind of earmarked when, with a note saying whatever I got was the key point from that session. So I can go back and reference it when I have that come up um, through all my um, caseloads through the year. So it's been very helpful, everything. That's fantastic, it's fantastic. I would agree with that also. I, as the PT in the district went um, for the SATCO, um, and that, and, and some technology also AT kinds of things. Um, and both of them have just re-energized. I was thinking, ah, it's too bad. It's not earlier in the year. So I had more time, to, <laughs> you know, to implement some of these things because yeah, lots of great ideas really appreciated the conference. There's also, Lots of time for you to implement them next year, right? <laughs> starting already have started came back <laughs> ready to go Goodbye. awesome yes and then making notes about what i want to do next year so i don't forget over the summer <laughs> yeah all right did that menti come up oh it is let me it is now up there Yes, the playground <laughs> board. I seeded it with the the playground board. But what other I, ideas do people have? If you're not in, I can type them in. I know there's going to be some more on um, vendor offerings um, as far as trainings and kind of how to use the different devices I think there's going to be a little bit of a focus on that yeah more from Tom Keating would be great oh yeah 
I have, I'm, I'm going to be starting to put his, I have a student on my caseload that's 20 and we're going to be using Tom's tool to work on her transition. That's got, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to write this into the IEP for next year. So, so yeah, I can't wait to, to get that and in, into action. It's a cognition, right? Is that his? Cognitopia. Yeah. Cognitopia. Yes, I spent Funding. some time at the conference talking to him. Maybe a, a session on funding or how-to funding or resources for funding devices. So important, right? Yeah. What, what are those steps yeah. for people who have never done it, right? Like a walkthrough through Medicaid. I wonder if we could get a... right. And then that could be we've had one of those here in Wisconsin. It's really helpful. You know, we had one of the, the, and it was from the practitioner point of view. So one of our lead AAC people here in the state, um, and she just went through all avenues, um, and and it was it was a great presentation. It really oh, was. So we need to yeah. find an expert in the state. Yeah, it's. Just, it. I think it's important that I mean, there's certainly people that know the general and. And all of the companies have in-house people that that's what they do, right? Like that's mm -hmm. what people, that's our job is to help us get stuff funded. Yes. But it's nice to have somebody from within your own state because there's all, you know, there's always little nuances that mm -hmm. are, you know, what, to, what you can and can't do with state-driven funds, right? Mm -hmm. And so I yeah. think, yeah, I, I, I would. So I just recently attended a webinar through the Toby Dynavox company about funding and resources. And they have yeah. a link that breaks it down per state um, too. And then I think some of the other ones are jumping on board with that as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, so, I mean, Prinky um, Satillo's had those kind of supports online and yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And again, a reminder for people that are watching this, not live here with Ginny and Joy and Chandra and I, um, please, you know, go to this mentee and add to it because Chandra and the team at OTAP are going to be looking at this as they build the 2023, tw oh, can we talk about 2024 oh, uh, set <laughs> of, of presentations? Yeah. So Chandra, I'm going to wrap myself up here i don't know if you have anything else that you need to do to to wrap us up as we come close to the end of our time i am just gonna put in my email address into the chat so that if people watching later want to let us know what they want to hear they can do that It's a mouthful. My email address is kind of long. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to throw this up on our YouTube channel. I will make sure it is put in the archives. And that wraps up another year of Echo Voices. Thank you for doing these. These are actually, it's a great little chunk. To